Hello friends. In 1895, the Russian physicist Alexander Popov carried out the world's first radio communication session using a radio receiver he created. In 1918 the radio station, Vestnik Rasta, appeared, and from the age of 21 it became possible to transmit music and voice broadcasting. On the air of the Soviet Union, recruiting poems and satirical stories were heard, and in 1923 the first radio concert was performed. During the Great Patriotic War, the programs, Letters from the Front, To the Front, and Reports from the Soviet Information Bureau were broadcast. Even before the war, an amateur radio business was actively developing in the country, since in the event of a war, many citizens of the USSR could broadcast radio to the rear of the enemy, receive messages and conduct propaganda work in the occupied territories. However, there were also disadvantages. The free exchange of information using the radio was dangerous for the authorities, moreover, it facilitated the work of enemy intelligence on the territory of the USSR. Therefore, it was decided to register all radio amateurs in the country. They were assigned to DOSAAF, forcing them to join this organization without exception. The desired effect was obtained, the army was regularly replenished with signalmen, and all the country's radio clubs were secretly supervised by the NKVD. After the end of the war, shops for radio amateurs opened in big cities, and radio business circles in the palaces of the pioneers. Every radio amateur dreamed of assembling his own radio transmitter and going on the air, but for this it was necessary to go through a bunch of authorities and meet certain requirements, so it was much easier to go on the air illegally. This is how radio hooligans or organ grinders appeared, the peak of their popularity was in the 60 to 80s. Then every Soviet family, regardless of income, considered it necessary to have a radio in the house. Homemade radio stations, collected on their knees, called hurdy-gurdy, in addition to exchanging call signs and conversations, broadcast recordings of the latest Western performers at that time, the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Deep Purple, etc., as well as reading dissident literature and relevant to population information about natural disasters, industrial accidents and corruption, in general, everything that was hushed up by the official authorities. For the country's leadership, this was dangerous and therefore a decree, on liability for illegal manufacture and use of radio transmitting devices, appeared. Back in 57, the State Telecommunications Inspectorate was created, whose duties included control of the air. Its employees were engaged in cleaning the air from radio hooligans, as well as searching for illegally operating transmitters. Together with the KGB and the police, operations were carried out to catch organ grinders, Cars equipped with radio direction finders were driving around, with the help of which the approximate areas from which radio broadcasts were carried out were revealed. Violators were identified, their equipment was confiscated, and the parents of teenagers were fined with the threat of criminal prosecution. The violator of the broadcast for the first time was fined from 10 to 50 rubles, for a repeated violation, the fine was from 50 to 150 rubles, but if caught a third time, the radio amateur could go to jail for a period of one year. There were also wired radio hooligans among the radio hooligans. Since the apartment radio stations did not work around the clock, wired radio hooligans did not make any radio transmitters. They connected the amplifier output, a tape recorder to the radio network and played their favorite music. As a result, the whole house could listen to what the radio hooligan was broadcasting on the radio. With the development of computer networks, interest in the radio business has noticeably faded, although radio hooligans still exist today. Who liked the video? You like, subscribe and comment, but I went to look for new interesting and unusual facts. Alex Moss was with you, thanks for watching, see you again.